Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for my 500 subscriber Q&A response video. So, over the course of the last week, I ran a giveaway competition to celebrate hitting 500 subscribers on the Leaky Cheese channel. And on the Q&A video, lots of you guys left questions. So I've been through those questions and collected a selection of them. And in this video, I'm going to go through and answer those as best as I can. But before I get into that, I would also just like to thank you all for um, all the very kind comments that you left um, on the 500 subscriber giveaway video and other videos as well. Um, I do very much appreciate those. And I also very much appreciate the feedback in terms of thinking about what content you're enjoying. And it helps fuel my ideas for, for new content as well. And, and one of the th really useful things I found was that I could, out of your comments, I could, I've picked out several themes about what seems to draw you to the content that I produce. And I thought I'd just play these back to you, so I'm interested here if this is what you think I'm about. Uh, and then there's a chance for you to say, well, actually, you're also about this, or you're not about that. So it'll be interesting to hear what you think. And um, so the first theme is, you appreciate detailed reviews and unboxings of the, what I buy, so particularly Forge World products. Um, you like honest reviews of Forge World kits, so I think uh, obviously getting into the, the detail of how to assemble them, uh, and also looking at the quality of those kits. Uh, and making sure that that's good as well. The other thing that I really liked was lots of people have said, you inspired me to buy XX Forge World model, uh, or I bought my very first Forge World book after watching your reviews. And then, yeah, and, and that's encouraging because I really enjoy the Horus Heresy hobby uh, and everything that Forge will do about it. And it's great to see that enthusiasm rubbing off on some of you guys as well. So, um, yeah, um, that, that's really good to hear. Uh, and then another theme was around the Retro Hammer video. So, you know, where I go back to the early days of Warhammer 40,000, look at some of the early models and rule books uh, and talk about those and, you know, my, my experience of those as well. So those are key themes that I picked up and, uh, yeah, so I'll be interested to hear what you think of those. Without further ado, let's move into the question and answer section. I don't really know what you put in the background of a question and answer video, so I've put my uh, Mastiff Warhound uh, which serves as a bit of a channel mascot uh, at the moment. So uh, I thought I'd uh, have him in shot or her in shot, perhaps. Right, so what is the first question? Um, so Christian Smith asked, May I ask, what is your favourite Forge World Horus Heresy book, as in the best one of those released so far? So, ooh, let's start with a difficult question, shall we? Yeah, picking a favourite out of the Horus Heresy books is difficult um, because they're all really good um, and every book's got something unique and interesting to offer. If I were to pick a favourite, it would, you know, even trying to pick a favourite, well, I'm thinking about books one, two, three, five, and six, um, you know, and that's tough competition. But I think if I were to pick one that out of those, I don't know, I really enjoyed overall, I think actually, and interestingly, it's book six. And that's not to take anything away from the others or any of the other books. But the reason I like book six so much is because it brings together so much of the story that had come in the preceding five books and then frames in what the probably most of the Horus Heresy looked like as a, war, as a galactic civil war. Um, it's really well written. And it's also got the fantastic black shields and uh, Shattered Legions list in it as well. And it's also full of a great selection of playable characters to use in the game, you know, the likes of the Knight Errant, shall we say, and Shadrach Medusan, the Shattered Legion characters. So yeah, uh, book six, but only by a nose. So the next question is uh, Knight Artorias, brackets Abyss Walker, asked, uh, my question is, why Iron Hands? I play Lunar Wolves myself, Loyalist Sons of Horus. And then Climbing Man also asked, why and how did you choose the 10th Legion to play in the Horus Heresy? And Blockmasters Studios also asked, what made you choose the Iron Hand specifically, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, well, I certainly don't mind you asking. Right, so three questions there. Why, why did I choose Iron Hand's Legion? Part of this is um, probably as many people's force choices are. Part of it is by design and part of it is by accident. My Iron Hand's Legion actually started out as a supporting detachment to my large Mechanicum force and my first foray into the Horus Heresy game was actually playing Mechanicum and building a Mechanicum army. I wanted to add some Marines in because I had a few, I had a, um, a Contempt to Dreadnought. I wanted to bring that into my games 
Um, so I bought some Mark III Marines to go with it and a, a couple of other bits and it, it started off as a little detachment and then I think as a bit of an impulse by further down the line I bought the Glaive tank, the Super Heavy, just because I like the model so much. Anyway, I'd had them for a while and believe it or not I kind of got to a point where I thought a couple of years back I thought, hmm, I don't really need these iron hands. I think I'm going to focus on Mechanicum and I'd actually got ready to sell the whole lot and they were all photographed, I'd written the listings on eBay and I was kind of almost at that point of pressing list and I just kind of like, I was looking over the listings and just looking at the photos and looking at the models I'd set out, I just thought, these are too nice to sell, I, I can't sell these and I started ch chatting with a couple of friends and, and you know, then one idea led to another and before I knew what I was doing, um, I, I'd embarked on building a legion force. Uh, of the Iron Hands. So that's kind of like, that's a personal bit of it. Why did I choose Iron Hands? Well, when I started out, I only had a limited selection of Loyalist Legions to choose from. Uh, so essentially, we were talking about uh, Iron Hands, Raven Guard, and Salamanders around the time of Book 1, Stroke Book 2. I chose the Iron Hands because I like, I like their style of combat. They're very shooty. They like armor, and that fits with my play style. I also like them on a characterful point of view. I like how as a legion they're very no-nonsense and you know Ferris Manus is arguably the most straight-up Primarch there is. You know, he's a warlord, he's there to conquer the galaxy for the Emperor and he doesn't get, or he didn't get distracted by the politics and insecurities and all those sorts of things. He was, you know, he in some ways he was the epitome of what um, the Primarchs were supposed to be. You know, he knew he wasn't a politician, so I like that aspect of the Iron Hands as well. I like their affinity with the Mechanicum, and obviously he's playing the Mechanicum originally. I, I like how the two sit together in that regard. Uh, and in game, they're, you know, battle, they're sworn brothers when you play them. So I like that aspect as well. And I think from a painting point of view, um, they're going to be a fairly straightforward paint on account of being black. And having built such a large legion up, uh, that's going to help me out with that project. Yeah, I hope that uh, answers that question about choosing the Iron Hands. The next question is from PB Dimitri, and he says, While well, at certain times your criticisms may be a tad harsh, in my personal opinion, your evaluation of Forge War kits is unequaled on YouTube. Note that he also said he wrote this um, while he was, quote, hammered. However, I do compliment you, PB Dimitri, for spelling criticisms correctly despite that. So, yes, uh, what do I think of this one? Well, just kind of is a useful explanation of what I'm doing here. Probably watch my reviews and think they're fairly um, dispassionate and I try to be objective in those reviews. And that's to articulate to you guys, um, you know, what the product's like. I suppose though, at the same time, I'm also a hobbyist myself and, you know, I've got my own thing, my own deadlines to try achieve, my own time to try use uh, and get the most out of that. So sometimes, you know, if I've been harsh in a in a review might be because you know my own personal hobby time is being disrupted by a fault on a kit so you know this kind of you know you can't always be dispassionate can you and that's not what I'm trying to do I'm not trying to be a you know this is a journey about sort of what I do in the hobby and sharing that with you guys and sometimes it's not just all about the sort of facts about it it's also you know how you feel about it as a, as a person isn't it um, but thank you very much, PB Dimitri. Um, to to say my valuations of Forge or kits are unequaled on YouTube is a very uh, it's a very flattering and kind thing to say. So I really appreciate that. This question is from Nat Wainwright, and he says, "Mega grats on the 500 subs, LC. Thank you very much, Nat. Um, have you thought about Patreon for a bit of funding? Now this is an interesting question, and it did get me thinking. Um, on this channel, I've so far I've purposefully tried to avoid any advertising on it and as, as if I as long as I've got all my YouTube settings correct as far as I can tell I have but I've tried to set it up so you go guys don't get adverts on the channel however that means yeah there's no revenue from it and you know that doesn't that doesn't bother me the idea of patreon funding is interesting and I think I would need to have a model of how to make that work um, and how would that drive something into the channel uh, that I'm not already doing and I'm thinking about that at the moment and I have got a few ideas you know there is clearly if there's an opportunity to use Patreon funding to buy additional models that I wouldn't normally buy 
uh, to review, build and show you guys, you know, all that sort of stuff. So that's one possibility. There's other things I'm thinking of as well. So yes, so I am considering it. I'm also just getting, uh, just looking into the tax implications as well. As well. So I'm, uh, I'm waiting for some advice back from uh, someone I know on that. A question to all of you would be, you know, is that something you'll be interested in supporting? Um, let me know. The next question is from g.ambulance.service. How do you justify to the missus forge wall purchases such as the heresy books? Uh, I hide everything under the bed and burn all my receipts and uh, never tell her about the channel. No, that's a lie. Um, how do I justify the purchases to Mrs. Uh, Leek Cheese? Well, I suppose we're, I, I guess I'm, I'm very, I'm quite fortunate, I consider myself to be quite fortunate and privileged in terms of the income we have as a family. And the way me and my wife run things is we put all of our income into one pot each month and then we t both take an equal percentage out of that because you know my, my wife she um she doesn't work as many hours as she used to do in her profession uh, because of uh, the children um but you know like myself she's a professional and she's got a full career and if not for taking that time out of her life to raise her children and do things with them you know, I'm sure you know we'll probably be equally earning the same sort of money. So, yeah, so that's that's how the justification goes. So she's got her money, I've got mine. All my money seems to go on resin stuff and other fun things like that. Uh, and then Dave G follows up. So if we don't see any more videos, we can assume Mrs. Leaky Cheese found out. Lol. Um, yes, you could. Uh, or if I start doing videos in an extremely high pitched voice, you know what's happened. Uh, the next question is from Ravi Karoya. If I get the pronunciation right, apologies if not. Uh, and this question says, my question is, when did you start Warhammer 40K and what is your favorite all time unit? So the first part of the question is straightforward. Um, I first started in 1988. So there you go, do the numbers. That's nearly 30 years now, goodness me. Um, yes, first started in 1988. My first ever White Dwarf was White Dwarf 107 of the old numbering system. And the first miniatures I ever bought was a three-pack white metal Space Marines. Uh, one of them had a pair of power fists or power gloves. One of them had a bolt pistol and one of them had a melter gun. There you go. Uh, and they all had white metal backpacks as well. So uh, yeah, that goes to show how long ago that was. Uh, and then what is your favorite all-time unit? Gosh, that's a hard one. Having been involved in the hobby on and off for so long, there are a lot of candidates there. I'm going to pick, I've, I've picked one out because it's just one that sticks in my mind. And I really used to like the World Eater Tactical squads from the Slaves to Darkness um, World Eater Legion list. So this is kind of 40k traitors. And they were kind of, they were like a do it all squad. Had your normal um, bolters and other, you know, bolters and missile launcher, those sort of weapons. You could buy them jump packs so they're jump capable if you wanted it. And also, every guy was armed with a chainsword, so they were kind of like the ultimate do-it-all squad, and they were really good in melee. And I used to love my old, my old-style World Eaters Force, and um, I really liked the tactical squads on the in terms of how they played. So yeah, I hope that answers your question. And I will be doing a retro hammer on those models because I do actually still have quite a lot of them. My original World Eater Traitor Force. The next question is from Greg T Dude. Uh, did you build your Warlord before making these videos? So I am part way through constructing my uh, Warlord Mars Pattern Titan at the moment. The legs, are, the leg structure is built and probably about 80% of the torso is assembled as well. Uh, and then I've also built the, one of the, vol I built the Volcano Cannon. This is definitely on my list of things to do. And the way I'm gonna do some videos on this is I'm gonna start off talking about what I've already done um, because there's a lot of interesting ideas around the structural construction of a Warlord Titan um, and, and how to and, you know, put it together. And then I will proceed on to do a series, like a series of not my normal sort of build reviews of stuff as I put it together. So, you know, you know I guess we've got like the torso to assemble, we've got the head, we've got the arms to do, and the whole way I'm going to magnetise the weapons, and then there'll be all the armour plating. So, yeah, so that's, that's my thoughts around, around how I'm going to talk about the, my Warlord Titan. Craig Allison asks, uh, wonder if you will be reviewing Heresy Plastics, mainly uh, Betrayal at Calf and Burning of Prospero. Um, I will certainly do a review on Burning of Prospero, which I will buy to get hold of Custodian 
and Sisters of Silence models. Uh, I don't have any plans on portrayal at, at Calth at the moment, but certainly Burning of Prospero. The next question is from the Johnsonator, and the Johnsonator asks, Love the detailed explanations of everything you discuss here. Would like to see some painting tutorials if you're game. Um, yes, I am. Uh, lots of and, and lots of you guys ask about the painting, and you know you can see I've built these enormous armies, but I've not uh, got to the painting yet because I've, uh, I've built three heresy armies, uh, three big heresy armies as well. Um, but Iron Hands are first on the list to paint, and yes, I will do some discussions around painting. I mean, I probably consider myself a better builder than a painter. You know, I'll show you how I do them, and I think when when I do start painting these, I'll be looking to paint because I've got. You know, the Iron Hands Legion is a big force. So, in terms of how I paint it, I'll be looking to use techniques that allow you to get good results in a short period of time. Uh, and I'm hoping that's something that you uh, you all might find of interest. Hewson08 says, Feliki, charge! Cheers, mate. Clorox Bleach, great name, uh, asks the following. Well, for a question, I'm looking into starting an Iron Hands army. Do you have any tips on what models I should run with? Are the Gorgon Pattern Terminators and Medusa Immortals any good in combat? Um, to answer the latter part of your question first, yes, they are very good in combat. Do you have any tips on what models I should run with? Well, definitely get some Tactical Marines. Gorgon Terminators are good, Medusa Immortals are good, and get some armour in as well. With Iron Hands you want a mixture of armour and infantry because they've got special rules that work well for both groups. So if you go all army you'll miss out and if you go all infantry you'll miss out so you want a good mix. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to address this question more thoroughly in a in a in some videos looking at building a 40k a 30k 40k force if you will uh, and what how to put a force together and I'll probably do that through the lens shall we say of my Iron Hands Legion. The next question is from Chris Donohoe, and it is, what's your favorite model in all of 30K stroke 40K models at this time? So, gosh, now this is a real toughie, this one. As I said earlier, I've been gaming 40K on and off for nearly 30 years, and I've owned forces of um, Marines, Guardsmen, Orcs at times, believe it or not, um, Eldar, uh, Tau, Tyranids, and then we got onto all the 30k stuff as well. Huge number of models that I've owned in my time. So, gosh, this is a tough one. I don't think I can answer it in one model. So I'm just gonna pick a few out. I'm gonna cheat. Um, my first, so I've gotta say, the RTB01 Plastic Space Marine box set. Yeah, that's what got me into the hobby, really. And that was a great kit for its time. Back in the era of Lost in the Dam, there was a model called Toadface uh, in the Nurgle Chaos Renegade lit model selection. And it took me ages to find it because Games Workshop never released it generally. But I eventually managed to get one in this random selection box that they used to sell. And yeah, that's still one of my favourites, uh, funnily enough. Another, the first metal box that I ever got uh, for 40k was actually the Harlequin um, box set. And I really, I still to this day, really like the Death Jester models that came within that. Those are like some old ideas, I mean, some of my current favourites, I love the Armour Through the Ages miniatures, um, in particular the Mark VI with the uh, Rogue Trader John Civic artwork style helmets, those are real favourites. Glaive Super Heavy Tank, that's probably my all-time favourite 40k vehicle. Then I have to mention the Warlord Mars Pattern Titan, and yeah, I mean that's got to be on there as a favourite, just for the the sheer audacity of the model. The fact that Forge all dared to and successfully created this kit. I, I just love it for the sheer, what, what's the word? The sheer chutzpah of it. So yes, there's a few, uh, there's a few favorites, but that tough, tough question to ask of that, answer that one, very tough question. The next question is from Benjamin Sansam, who is a um, self-confessed hive mind representative. And he asked, is there any plan to review any of the Warhammer fantasy models? Not really at the moment. Um, I've not, I don't really do any fantasy. So unfortunately not. Although one of the thing that's, things that's been on my list of to-dos is to do some reviews of critters. So you might remember me mentioning that I acquired an old Amble model from the 40k era. And I've got a couple of other 
beasts that I'd like to do. And perhaps, I don't know, maybe maybe in the fantasy range there might be a beastie that would make some nice deathworld flora or fauna. Um, well, fauna, shall we say. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, if, you've, if anyone's got any different thoughts on that, let me know. Next question is from the Humble Welsh Airsofter. Uh, and he says, keep up the great work, Mr. Cheese, and remember, the flesh is weak. It is indeed. Hail Clan Morrigal. Jeremy Ivers wryly observes, Leaky has almost as much Forge World stuff as I do. Yep, and I, I now show that comment to Mrs. Leaky Cheese if I get challenged about the number of models I have. So, thank you, Jeremy. Um, the next question um, is from Philistine AU and our lucky winner of the Apothecarian model in the giveaway. Congratulations again. Um, what I would love to see is a video on basic tactics for those of us who have never played a game of Warhammer 40k before. So, yeah, that, I, I, like, I really like this um, idea and I will explore it. Uh, and that kind of also fits in a bit with the question that Clorox Bleach asked around uh, building an Iron Hands force. And I can see those two coming together. And yeah, that, I will, that gives me a really good idea to do a video talking about um, the game of 40k and the tactics, but I won't just talk about the tactics. I'll, I'll, I'll share my thoughts on what 40k is as a game and what it's actually like to play. So I've played lots and lots and lots of miniature war games over the years, um, ranging from the sci-fi to the historical to the modern day. So yeah, uh, yeah, I'll give you kind of like my perspective on the game from the point of view of how other miniature war games work as well. Next question is from Bong Ripper. Leaky Cheese, I was wondering, have you ever considered doing a subscriber Google Hangout? I'd love to chat with you and other interesting people for a while about the hobby and anything else. I hadn't considered doing a Google Hangout, although I have I've seen live streams on quite a few of the channels that I follow on YouTube, and I guess that's a similar sort of thing. I'll look into that one. I'll need to figure out the whole recording bit and all that sort of stuff, I think, to turn it into some channel content. Um, and that's a question to you guys as well, you know, is that something that you'll be interested in joining in with, a Google Hangout or equivalent uh, type live event? And the final three questions is from James Roy, VJ Morph and Matt, and they all ask, how did you come up with your name? Ooh, can I tell you, is it too early to tell you the story behind Leaky Cheese? So there is a story. I think that I'm going to save for one another day. That brings me to the end of all the questions from the 500 subscriber giveaway video. So thank you very much for all those uh, for all your participation in that. Um, I hope you've enjoyed listening to my thoughts and answers and uh, ramblings in response to your various questions. I've posed a few questions back to you guys uh, while I've been answering your questions. So um, I would appreciate that, you know, I would appreciate your thoughts uh, on some of those things that I've put to you, you know, um, ideas for uh, channel content, um, the question of Patreon funding, the live hangout idea, painting tutorials, all those sorts of things. Yeah, if you've uh, got any ideas, feedback on those, I'd uh, be really interested to hear. But that was 500 subscribers. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you all very much for uh, joining me so far on the channel. It's been great fun and it's been a, quite an experience. Uh, I think uh, I think we've got further, a lot further to go with this uh, and, and somewhere to go in the future. I'll certainly do another event like this at a thousand subscribers, so do watch out for that. But anyway, as always, thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time and goodbye. <laughs>